A big hello to all the students and welcome to the classification of final kingdom. In the first two sessions, we discussed the phyla protozoa, Polyphera, Nidiria, and Tinophora. And in this session, we are going to focus on the next two phyla that are Platyhelminthes and Nematura. So let's get started. So let's first start with the phylum Platyhelminthes. This phylum has derived its name from two Greek words. First is platys, which means flat, and the second is helmins, which means worms, flat worms. That's what the members of this phylum are commonly called. And they are called so because of the reason that their body is dorsoventrally flattened. They exhibit organ level of body organization, and around 10,000 species of this phylum are known till date. Now let's have a look at some of the general characteristics of the members of the phylum Platyhelminthes. They are a coelomate. They do not have a true coelome. That is, their body cavity is not a true coelome lined by mesoderm. The body cavity is filled with mesenchyme or parenchyme. They are the first animals in the animal kingdom to be triploblastic. They have three proper germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. Also, they are the first animals to exhibit bilateral symmetry in their body. Some of the members exhibit segmentation in the body, but that segmentation is not true metamerism, it is pseudometamerism. In true metamerism, the homologous organs of one segment show serial repetition in the other segment, whereas in pseudometamerism, the organs in one segment are completely independent of the organs in the other segment. The members of this phylum show only pseudometamerism. Some of the parenchyma cells in the body give rise to muscle fiber, which are arranged in circular, longitudinal, and vertical layers. And they do not have a proper circulatory system. The excretory system consists of protonephridia. These are ciliated excretory tubes, which are specialized for filtration. Their digestive system is incomplete as they do not have anise. The alimentary canal is absent in the members of the class Testoda and Ursula and branched in the members of Turbillaria. Respiratory organs are absent. In parasitic forms, the respiration is anaerobic. Nervous system is formed of longitudinal nerve cords with ganglia. A pair of anterior ganglia constitute the brain. And the longitudinal nerve cords are connected in between by transverse connectors. They are hermaphrodite in nature or monoecious, that means they consist of both male as well as female reproductive organs. The fertilization is internal. Self fertilization is found as well as cross fertilization, but cross fertilization is more commonly observed. Development is indirect or direct. In endoparasite, indirect development is the normal trend, which consists of many larval stages. The life cycle involves one or two hosts in the parasitic forms. Whereas some free living members are also found in this phylum. The parasitic forms have adhesive organs like hooks, spines, suckers, and adhesive secretions, which help in their survival. Let's have a look at these simple diagrams, which show the flame cell and the nervous system of planaria, that is, platform. These flame cells are specialized ciliated excretory cells, which Combined together in bunch to form a protodectridia. As you can see, the cell has a nucleated cell body and a cup shaped projection whose inner surface is lined with cilia. This projection leads to an excretory tubule which is also lined by cilia. Due to the flame like movement of the cilia, the cell is known as flame cell. This is the nervous system of planaria in which we can see two longitudinal nerve cords with a pair of anterior ganglia which combine to form brain. These longitudinal nerve cords are attached to each other through transverse connectors and these are the lateral nerves which project from the nerve cords. Phylum platyhelminthes has been further classified into three classes, class turbillaria, class trematoda and class cystoda. Order Ursula of Turbillaria lacks flame cells, which are found in all the other members of the phylum. Now let's have a look at some of the characteristic features of the members of class Turbillaria. 
Most of the Turbularians are free living, but some of them are parasitic or active commensal. The commensal organisms are those organisms which maintain a relationship with another organism which benefits them. But on the other hand, it does not either help or harm the other organism. So it's a kind of symbiotic relationship in which one of the species is benefited and the other species remains unaffected. Ectocommensal animals are those anim animals which live on the surface of the other animal maintaining a commensal relationship. The epidermis of the members of this class is either cellular or syncytial and covered with cilia. By syncytial epidermis we mean that it's a kind of multinucleated epidermis. Uh, it has a continuous cytoplasm forming a peripheral layer which we call actocytoplasm and is connected with the underlying nucleated cell bodies with the help of cytoplasmic bridges. Rod-like structures called reptites are present in the ep epidermis. They are secreted along with the mucus and they easily dissolve in water and are very distasteful. So they act as a kind of defense mechanism for turbularians against those animals which prey on them. The animals of this class do not show any kind of segmentation. Elementary canal is present in most suckers are absent and life cycle is simple. The example of this class is Dugesia, commonly known as Planaria worm. This simple diagram shows the anatomy of Planaria or the Platinum. As you can see, there are two eye spots which act as photoreceptors and help in moving away from the light source. There is a simple gastrovascular cavity which opens outside through a single opening that is the mouth. Mouth leads to pharynx, which then leads to the gastrovascular cavity. It is divided into two in the posterior part of the body. There is brain below the eye spots in the head of the planaria, through which two nerve cords run along the length of the body. They are connected to each other through transverse nerves. The next class of the phylum Platyhelminthes is the class Trematoda. These are actoparasites or enteroparasites on vertebrates. They are commonly known as flukes. Their body is unsegmented. They do not have cilia but their body is covered by a thick and resistant cuticle. They have suckers, hooks and spines which help them in attaching to the host body. The examples of this class are polystoma, Sifiola, Schistosoma which is known as blood flu which is a parasite on man as well as other animals.